to scientists. So I just, I just think the whole idea of science and scientists and how they're portrayed and when we're good people and when we're bad is really fascinating to me. And so that's sort of how I got involved in talking with Stacy about these things. And that's what I want to talk about today. So I've only got, what, like five hours I can spend with you today. So I, <laughs> so I picked out five things that I would say myths about science and scientists that I want to talk about. And we will, I'll ask a few questions and we can talk about it. Um, and these are ones that I think are, to some extent, very closely related to the character, the main character in the day, some of the things that that character um, confronts and comes across. And so, um, let's, uh, let's start with uh, myth number one. This one's probably the furthest from the character in the day, but it's certainly, there are, there are parts in there where it's portrayed, and I really, I really kind of like it. But I'll start with it, because it's one of the things I like to talk a lot about, especially to students um, in the humanities or in the arts. And myth number one is that science is a rational process. <laughs> I know there's this great divide. Um, people seem to have this divide where they think, you know what? I'm a creative person. I'm a uh, sort of an artsy, humanities type person. And I'm not like those science geeks over there. Their minds work differently. We're geeks, I, I grant you that. That's not, that's not an issue. But, <laughs> but the whole idea that there's like, it, it's the whole division of like left brain and right brain as well. That there's this creative side, and that's not what scientists do. And then there's the uncreative, sciencey side that's very rational. We're automatons. We take in data, we analyze data, we extract those things, we form the next hypothesis, and we go on to the next issue. And we're driven by very logical thinking. We're the spots, the Mr. Spots of the world. And I'm sure, I mean, a lot of that does go on in science. But I'll tell you what, you'd be surprised if you spent time, even a day, with a scientist in their lab watching how science gets done, you'd be amazed to see how similar it is to the creative process that you see when people are writing plays or doing anything else. In fact, the language that scientists often use doesn't even sound like how we typically think of science. Um, I know I do it in my own science. Students will bring me data and I'll look at it and I'll go, there's something about this that just doesn't feel right. What's that? Doesn't feel right? It's data. Aren't I supposed to like do some deep analysis on it? No, I say things like, I don't know, this just, it just doesn't feel right, it doesn't smell right. My gut tells me that we've nailed it. <coughs> now I'm not saying that there isn't some sort of internal state we get into that helps us understand that we're right and we just have no access to it. It's some sort of an unconscious thing. We do a lot of unconscious analysis. Um, as a sideline, I'm a neuroscientist. Those of you who think that you know, a lot of our brains are tied up with doing rational, conscious thinking, forget about it. 90% of it is unconscious. We have no access to it, and it's what's driving our behavior. Okay, so there. 